Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being with me today. I always appreciate your company. Here we are back in Lunar Zoo. This is our zoo based on buildings and foliage. And I just thought I'd start by giving you a bit of an overview of the zoo so far. I think it's coming along really well. I'm very happy with that actually. I'm really enjoying it as well. It's it's nice to be designing a zoo with a bit of a difference uh, to what I've done before. And on the whole, I think everything has come along quite nicely. I think the only one that I'm still not completely convinced with is the size of this big green roof of the reptile house over here. Other than that, all the buildings uh, I think look pretty good. They look um, sort of suitable for their their purpose and you know everything's blending together really well it looks nice and condensed but at the same time sort of sprawling um, so yeah this looking it's looking really good so today we're moving on over to this part of the zoo so this is uh, next to the this is the moose habitat uh, so it's next to them it's gonna be in this area just here uh, you can see I've got a temporary uh, keepers hut in here already um, but I wanted to do something in here and um, as I'm sure you've probably seen on the thumbnail uh, it's uh, domes, large domes. I had an idea for some sort of structure um, involving two large domes joined together. wasn't really too sure at the time when I started it what I was going to put in it but um, it ends up being uh, chimpanzees so we are going to create two chimpanzee domes uh, which are one big habitat and it's it's one of the best things I've built so far actually even if I do say so myself I had so much fun doing it it turned out so much better than I expected um, so yeah so let's crack on let me load up my first save point and I'll show you how I got started right so this is my um, initial dome and th this I couldn't believe how well this turned out actually considering this was my first attempt the the shape was exactly uh, what I envisage, envisaged as well as the size so basically what I wanted was a nice concrete looking dome lots of different types of stonework so I've already as you can see I've already it's sort of incorporated three or four different types of stones so you've got this lovely stone at the bottom then you've got some marble sort of limestone stuff uh, you've got the limestone brickwork along the side you've got these actually what are these pieces can't even remember what I used uh, a temple wall decoration so is that hang on let me just check I can't quite remember what this piece is whether it's um, yeah so it's the back you've got these decorations on the inside and I'm I'm using the the back of it as the uh, as the outside of the wall I liked the texture it's something a bit different uh, and obviously it was off grid which I needed because I needed to be able to create the angles of the dome so basically how I did this I just I created the uh, the initial centerpiece I built outwards with these rock pieces um, and then I, I did this or sort of the grid piece at the bottom and then I just laid it I just kept on I sort of built this first piece and and raised it up and then angled it and raised it up and angled it and angled it and angled it and when I got to here I decided I, I wanted the top uh, to have glass in it because I wanted natural light to come inside uh, and obviously if it's going to be a habitat then it, it would have some sort of opening you wouldn't have it completely enclosed um, certainly not if you're having some monkeys in there um, and so around the top here I just found the appropriate size glass pieces and sort of just filled it in and then I just copied and pasted I, I, I mirrored it to this side and then I just turned it and I'm never sure exactly how the the the, the science of the game works but there's there's got to be some science behind the fact that generally when you do this and you turn they always seem to match up and I don't know if that's because I used grid pieces uh, or whether I got lucky that I had them spaced just apart the right distance that when I turned and duplicated the whole thing four times they ended up matching perfectly so you can see each uh, let me just show you uh, now hang on actually no that's not let me just sorry let me correct myself these pieces at the bottom are still non grid pieces that's it I had to use these because I didn't want it on a grid because I wanted it as one building so these are these large dry stone wall buttresses at the bottom so I wanted this texture but I didn't want to use the grid piece 
uh, because I wanted it to be one big building. And obviously, if you use grid pieces and then you turn them, you you can't um, you can't have them as a, a single building. They have to be um, separate buildings. So yes, yeah, so I had to use different pieces. So it was non-grid, and it's worked out really nicely. Um, I, I wanted it to be a little bit ornate at the bottom. Um, not sure why. Just fancied having a bit of ornateness around the, the base. Obviously, that's the bit at ground level where people are walking around. Um, so I, I guess they'd put a bit more effort and money into that. And then the top is just a functional dome. And it's worked out really nicely. And I was even amazed when I went inside that it even looks good on the inside. It actually looks finished. Um, apart from this middle piece, obviously, this, this, this gets deleted. This was the piece I used to... Uh, to make sure everything was centralized so that disappears of course but all of these support beams that come in they actually look realistic it looks like an actual dome that would be supported with all these various beams they actually look quite realistic i think so i didn't have to do anything on the inside which was really nice um, so that was my basic dome uh, which was yeah just brilliant i just loved it absolutely loved it straight away so all I needed to do was duplicate it, which was obviously very easy, link them together. So that involves moving, um, sort of deleting uh, a piece and creating a, a, a connection between the two. And obviously some sort of door at some point as well. Uh, and obviously it's in the wrong place. So I wanted it over here, but I, I just built it over there. So I, I knew I could move it when I wanted to. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's my dome. Very, very happy with how that turned out. Um, so yeah, so let's move on, shall we, and see what I do next. I suspect next I probably move it into place over here and duplicate it and probably connect them as well. Uh, but let me load it up and we shall see. Here we go. Our domes are in position. So I've duplicated it. I've put in a couple of doorways as well. So that was pretty simple. Uh, just had to obviously remove the wall from the outside and then just play around a little bit inside here um, with some of this obviously just making sure this looks decent in here blocking all of this off and uh, the bit uh, sort of above here as well just making this look like it's a good solid structure um, so that was that was pretty straightforward really um, and obviously I, I did that and then I duplicated it over to here so you've got another entrance there and obviously I've got the path running through and I had to create uh, a large entrance way here as well uh, so again this is simple i just had to create some new stone block pattern at the side here to um to fill in uh, the gaps uh, so you can now walk all the way through and back out the other side so that was all actually quite straightforward but i think you'll agree it looks pretty cool i mean they really stand out they're very big clearly they're clearly the biggest structures that the zoo is going to have probably um, but yeah, I'm really, really liking how they look at this stage. Uh, I was very excited about actually putting some animals in there. So my thinking was, because obviously this this pathway, I, I, I put this in and then I sort of thought, oh, actually, how am I actually going to have the animals in here? Because I didn't want any sort of a, a cover here, like a gate or anything. So I thought, right, the logical thing to do is to create a tunnel inside like a cage tunnel so this pathway will get completely enclosed in a cage from door to door so it's a separate um sort of bit of land essentially from the rest of the building and it means that i can have an animal in here and they can't escape because the only way in and out are these doors and they won't be able to get through them because there'll be a cage so that is probably the the next stage of what i do um, but obviously that also need, me, meant that I needed to put in a habitat entrance, which I believe I just sort of do the same thing. I, I, I delete the hole, you know, create the hole in one of these, I believe, over at the side here uh, for the, the keepers to go in and out. But I thought this, this area in here, I mean, look at this, it's such a nice big empty space. It would be perfect for chimpanzees, wouldn't it? to have loads of big climbing frames and things in here. Oh, the camera goes really funky sometimes, doesn't it? When I when you're in and out of buildings like that, it seems to flit all over the place. It's very annoying. Um, actually, you can do the, was it Teji Cam, I think it's called, where, you, where you're sort of disconnected in some way. Maybe that might be a bit better for when I'm flitting around in here. 
yeah that seems to work a bit better actually actually yeah, it makes it a lot easier to look upwards as well doesn't it probably should have been using that for the last 200 videos that i've done in a zoo to be honest <laughs> it just never occurred to me oh i'm such a plonker sometimes i really am um so yeah so there we go so that is our next stage i think that's looking really nice and it's it i actually got lucky with the coloring as well it, it they don't look even though they're large and they stand out they don't look too in your face um and they don't uh they don't look fake they actually look real they actually look like they could exist in real life um and the, the sight lines were pretty good i was pretty happy um i mean you obviously you can see them from a long way away which is what i wanted so as you walk around here you can see them in the distance and i, and I like that i wanted them to to be visible while you were i mean look at that that's that's great isn't it because you'd come around this corner you'd see your hippos and then you'd see them in the distance and think oh my god look at that i want to go and investigate what's in there um which is the point let's just move around here as well uh so let's come through this way i think probably as you come around this corner yeah i mean straight away look in the distance massive domes you've got a couple of lions walk around next year a couple of tigers or whatever uh, but what 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 are you thinking about? You're looking at them domes, aren't you? You're going, wow, look at that. Let's go and investigate. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Tiger. How are you doing? Having your lunch? Lovely. Right, there we go. So let's move on, shall we? I think I probably move inside next and start building the cage and getting a bit of the, the infrastructure inside the, uh, the domes set up next. So uh, yeah, let's move on right let's head on in shall we let's go through our keeper's door so this is what i put in so it's very close to the uh, the entrance uh for the guests but it's in here and i sunk the door to the inside layer of wall rather than the outside just to just to keep it a little bit more hidden uh from the public you know while they're walking around out here obviously you can see it here but there will eventually be foliage and stuff around the outside here um but yeah so that is our keeper habitat so let's go in and you can see we have a few chimps inside already now they're not very happy at the moment because they can't really go anywhere uh, their, their traversable area is just that at the moment which is understandable because that's all i've managed to build so far uh, because these pieces here i discovered so basically I, I built this cage i wanted it to look really nice and solid so there's these mesh pieces and these logs so it's a very simple structure and um, you know logs top and bottom you know good square structure just lots of copying and pasting and just creating a complete cage for the entire walkway linking up back to this part over here however I, I when i did this it didn't occur to me that these logs are not climbable logs unfortunately i wanted the whole cage to be climbable uh, but then i built it and i then put the uh, the chimps in and i realized they were just standing around not doing anything and then I looked at their traversable area and it, it said that and I just thought oh no I've used non-climbable logs although actually look it does say this one is climbable but they, they clearly they just they can't climb them um, whether they think it's climbable or not they're not going up them um, so that you know it was it was fine it's something I could overcome at least um, which obviously I, I do do um, but yeah so that's that's the case it's really simple structure um, it didn't uh, didn't take too long to design it and and copy it around but it, it's functional it does what it, it needs to now obviously in real life you wouldn't be able to get that close to the uh, the chimps there would be another layer of mesh in between you and them but this is a computer game we have to remind ourselves sometimes don't we that this is a game and i'm not building a super realistic park here this is uh, a park with moments of um what's the word i'm looking for moments where you just don't care about realism there you go i, I can't think of the word to describe that um but yeah that's it actually you know i don't even know what, why are these chimps not moving at all that is quite worrying isn't it what's going on there i mean they should be moving even if they can't climb around yet they should still be doing something surely let's speed it up do they do anything no they're not even they're not eating they're not drinking actually i haven't put any drink in for them yet have i no they've got nothing but the keeper's not even feeding them how strange i promise you by the end they will be running and jumping and climbing and all sorts but at the moment yeah they clearly were not happy were they never mind they'll get there in the end 
so there we go. So that's our cage. So I just wanted to show you that because it, it was very simple, um, simple and effective, a bit like me. And so next was doing some more work around the roof. And obviously getting this cage climbable, uh, that was pretty simple. I, I, I found the appropriate climbable logs and basically you just build another layer of, of logs on top of these ones sort of crisscrossing and zigzagging around and whatever um, and it means that the chimps can then climb up on top of the cage and go running through into the next area as well um, so yeah I had a lot of fun doing the next bit the uh, the climbing frames um, because there's such a big area here and uh, I just I wanted you know I wanted platforms and, and logs going all sorts of angles all the way up and around the walls and all the way up right up into this roof area as well uh, and then obviously the same in this area and I, I wanted them linked as well I wanted something through this gap here as well so I've got a nice long log that sort of connects the two areas as well uh, so yeah so that's probably going to be happening in just a second I think in my next save point uh, so let's move on to that shall we well, just a very quick um, stop point here, purely just to show you what I, I did as a solution uh, to my non-climbing log problem. So this is all I did. So these are the climbable logs that you find actually in the habitat section down here. And I literally just lay them across all the ends and then just put some zigzagged ones across the top and a few just pointing down into the ground into each of the other areas like that uh, and I also have put a couple of water things in here I didn't want to ponder anything in here um, I just wanted uh, a couple of these water feeders there um, now the other thing that I also just had to do was to make sure that the zoo keepers could get from one area to the next I didn't realize um, they couldn't quite squeeze through these little gaps um, so I had to remove some of the stone pillars on this side here uh, to allow the keepers to actually walk down the side and get access into the next area as I will demonstrate whoops wrong one uh, there we go so the keepers can come down this side uh, they can't get into these areas over here unfortunately there was just no way of doing that without building big bridges and stuff but I thought that's that's fine don't mind that I just had to remember any food enrichment items had to go into these large areas on either side here uh, and there uh, let's have a look here are chimps traversable area there we go so now they can climb up they can get on top they can go down into here and they can go right the way through into this area as well so they have much more room to run around um, and as always they are just sitting down doing nothing do we think they're actually going to move somewhere this time or are they still stuck no they're still stuck yeah I, I seem to recall when I was building this that they just stood around a lot for a long time it was like it needed to calculate that they could actually move um but it it just i don't know it just took forever they just there we go oh ooh, one of them's moved. oh he wanted water so he's gone over there so he's worked that out do you think he he's going to go climbing or is he no he's going to go back he's got his little spot that he wants to stand in there's another one having a drink here we go look finally see then it figured it out and suddenly they all started moving off and climbing yeah, very odd. I guess it does take a while for it to figure out where they can move. Uh, I don't know why it takes so long, but there we go. But it, yeah, by the, but by the end of the video, I promise you there will be chimpanzees climbing up around the roof, enjoying a bit of sunshine coming in from the glass at the top. Um, they will be running like crazy. And there's a lot more chimps in here as well. I, I think I end up with ooh, maybe sort of 12, 14 chimps in here, maybe. Maybe even more. I can't quite remember, to be honest see this is the idea i wanted i wanted them running all over the place I, I i love the idea that you'd be walking through here and there'd just be chimps sitting above you and uh you know pooing on your head and all that sort of stuff <laughs> it would be cool wouldn't it if this was real i mean you'd, you'd want to walk through here and just be surrounded by chimps just climbing and running and screaming and all sorts wouldn't you it'd be really good fun um so yeah that's uh, that was my plan and it does end up like that, but at the moment it's looking a little bit lacklustre, isn't it? But I promise you by the end, uh, it will be a hive of activity. So without further delay, let's move on. I believe next we'll be starting building all the, um, the insides. Uh, so let's have a look. Oh, this was a lot of fun to build. So what I did here, I started with 
uh, a connection onto this cage across here and then I just kept on growing upwards basically so you've, you've got um, you've got angled ones that connect up to the wall and then you've got cross beams like that you've got platforms uh, you've got another one here coming down to the ground then it goes up a bit further and up a bit further you've got another uh, another platform you've got another cross beam and then another one coming off that goes up again up into the roof up to another platform and then another up beam and another one and another one basically just keeps going round because I wanted it to look realistic but I also didn't want it to look messy I didn't want it to all be jumbled around the middle here um, I wanted it to mainly go around the outside and then finally you get another platform and then this one coming over to the middle and you've got this floating platform here which is obviously just connected to the roof there and then it's got a cross beam here oh and look at that he's coming along to use it just as we're looking at it see so they come up and they climb down and hey presto they are sitting on a floating platform now in real life I don't think they would build a platform like that um, I think it would actually be a bit too dangerous for the uh, the chimpanzees. Obviously, if they fell off of there, they would probably die. So, oh look, he's pushed the pushed the box off. Doesn't care about the box. So yeah, in real life, um, they wouldn't build a platform like this. But I thought this was too good an opportunity to miss, so I just had to do it. So you can watch them. You come up here and you watch them. Uh, they run in the full circle. They do laps around the building, kind of thing, to get up to this top platform. And I made sure I put a couple of enrichment items up here. So that they can come up here i didn't put bedding on this one i put the bedding on the outside because uh, i thought in again in uh in game terms you would want the chimps to be sleeping on these outside ones so at least you could see them from potentially from the pathways uh, whereas if they were sleeping up here you can't see them at all um, so yeah and they love it as you can see they run all over the place they do sleep up on the platforms here uh, so yeah they, they they really enjoy it and uh, I really enjoyed building it. I, I did have a lot of fun with that. Uh, and then it goes through to the next room as well. So you've got this cross beam here. So again, it's linked down onto the floor. And then you've got this lovely big cross beam here that perfectly just goes right through the middle of this gap. So as you can see, they can still run underneath it, but they can also run along this long beam here. Is he going to do it? Is he going to come through? He is. Look at that. Perfect timing. Oh no, he changed his mind. He saw me. He saw me and changed his mind. <laughs> never mind so yeah so this is and connected to a platform in this one and essentially i've done the same in here it wasn't a copy and paste job it was individual um I, you know I want, it would have been too tricky to, to do a copy and paste of all of this so i just built a brand new thing in here very similar though um, all the beams are, are very similar you got this this one goes a little bit more along the center of the building rather than right around the outside but you know all done on purpose because i wanted it to be a little bit different but again, it comes all the way up to the, here, and then you've got another one of these floating platforms hanging right in the middle here as well. So there we go. That is our, our platforms done. Uh, obviously, you can see I've put various enrichment items around the floor as well. Um, now, that, yeah, so there we go. So that's that's our platforms done. I'm, I was really happy with how this turned out, and as soon as they... Um, there was a bit of a delay, but as soon as they started using all the platforms, I could appreciate that it was working and and looking good. And I think if you were down here watching them, I think it'd be a lot of fun watching them climbing up the sides. And uh, obviously, when they're up there, you can't really see them very much. But you know, chimps they, they would need somewhere private to get away. Um, but there'll be plenty of things down here. Obviously, most of the enrichment items are on the floor, so there's plenty of things to encourage them to come down. Uh, like I said at the moment there's not many chimps in here but I do put a load more in at the end so yeah there's plenty of things for them to be coming and uh, visiting down on the floor right so let's move on I think I can't remember I'll be honest I cannot remember I think I do put some foliage inside but I might be wrong about that I might be lying to you I can't remember if I wanted foliage in here or not and it's been a little while since I built this so well um it'll be a surprise when i load up the next save point and and see what i do obviously there's decoration to do on the outside so our final save point will be the outside here uh, this temporary keeper hut gets moved into the middle here and i do a pathway around the outside and i decorate it all but i think the next save point is more work inside so let me load that up uh, and we'll see what else i did okay here we are so yes i have put some foliage inside 
I've also increased the number of chimpanzees, so we now have uh, 17 chimpanzees inside. I've also just detailed a little bit more out here. Ah, there's probably another chimpanzee going in now. Um, I just wanted to smarten this up a little bit, so I'll put a light on and a little frame here for the door as well. So is that number 18? Yeah, 18 chimpanzees inside. And some foliage, so let's have a look. We have some trees. What do we have? We have a, a, a polylepsis tree. We have some eucalyptus trees here. And what are these little ones? Bush, bush something? Hang on, bush willow is it? Bush, hang on. Can't click on it. There we go. Uh, a river bush willow tree, yeah. So uh, yeah, I liked these trees. They're climbable, these, these eucalyptus. And they were just the right size. I wanted something in here which was big, but not so big that it filled the space. You know, so fairly see-through. There's lots of branches, not too much green. Um, so I thought these ones worked really well. They really look like the chimpanzees would be able to climb all over them. Um, so there's a few of those on each side. And they beautifully, they, they were just the right height as well. They stretch right up to the roof here. Look at this little guy carrying his little toy. Where's he gonna go with that, do you think? Oh, he's going to come running right past us. Is he going to play with it? Is he going to throw it somewhere? What do we think? Oh, we dropped it. Never mind. Hey, he's getting use out of it. That's what matters. So here we go. There's, um, yeah, lots and lots of chimps now. So you can see them just all over the place. You often see them chasing each other around, which is really nice. They're using all areas because I've put more more things in each of the the areas for them as well um, so yeah they have a lot of fun now in here run, running all over the place like nutters uh, really really nice environment for them and I think they would like it in real life so I love this when they chase each other Ooh. jump straight through each other why not Yeah, there we go. So I think the trees the, the trees work. Um, if I'd used the wrong type, I think it would have been overwhelming. But I think these particular ones work really nicely in here, actually. And these ones down here, they're not really functional in any way. I just, I don't know, I just wanted some more foliage. Um, maybe like they're growing some new smaller trees to replace these ones when, you know, when these eventually die off. And I, I, you know, I don't know, is it realistic that they could grow in here? I mean, it would be like a greenhouse for them. So I suppose it could with all this glass at the top. They probably could grow safely. But again, it's a computer game. I'm not worrying too much about that. It just looks good. So there we go. So really happy actually with how this turned out. Also put a couple of media things inside here. Nothing fancy there. Um, but yeah, as you walk through here, you can just see you can, you, you know, you've got chimps all over the place. You know, you come through here, you've, you've got, actually, there's no chimps to the right. But, uh, there we go. There's chimps to the left. Lots of chimps here to the left. You look up, you've got them climbing all over the place above you as well. Here we go. You see, they, they get very close to you. Uh, it really would be a lovely place to visit. Hello, Mr. Chimp. See, they come and walk right over your head. So, yeah, there we go. That is our chimpanzee dome all done um, on the inside at least there's one more save point which is the outside because I haven't done anything out there yet but actually the inside is done so I hope you like that I, 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 I really like it I have to say it's one of my favorite things that I've created hang on sorry I'm doing some dodgy camera work again um, it's, it's really hard to show the inside of a building like this um, I hope you sort of get the idea of what it looks like and the scale and everything um, yeah, there we go. Brilliant. I, I, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Look, you can see it from above as well. Um, at one point, I did consider trying to do some sort of sky platform, like steps coming up the outside, and then you could look downwards from the top, because that would be kind of cool if you could get right up close here and you could look down. Uh, but it, it just wouldn't look good at all, so I just I didn't bother with that. Because um, I thought they just looked so good like they are. I didn't want to ruin them by putting silly stairways up the outside or anything like that. So yeah, there we go. I just left it like that. So just one more save point, which will be the decoration around the outside. Uh, so let me load that up and I'll show you what I've done. And then that will be it for the episode. So here we have our finished uh, chimpanzee domes with the decoration on the outside. Uh, so this is our keep out. So I moved it in between the domes here and then just decorated it a bit fancy. Put a little brick sort of arbor thing out here with some wisteria growing on it and a little fountain in the middle. 
Um, nothing too fancy there. I just wanted to do something, uh, just something a little bit different. And then what I decided to do, because these domes are so big, let me zoom out and show you. I think it looks really nice, actually. I'm very happy with the foliage that I've done around the outside here. Um, what I decided to do was, I, because the domes were so big, I needed something tall around them, but I didn't want to hide them. I didn't want big bushy trees like oak trees or ash trees or anything. So I went with the cypress trees. Um, I just thought they were perfect because they're nice and thick coloured, they're thick, you know, thick foliage, but they're tall and thin. So they give you the height that you need next to a large domes like this, but they don't go wide, so they're not covering it up. You can still completely see the domes. Uh, so these are, let's have a look. We've got these cypress ones, and then what are these ones? The uh, Duharian larch trees, and then just to add a bit of different colour, I've gone with some of the Japanese maple trees as well. And I've just used a combination of those basically. Got some hydrangea bushes, and then on the floor, um, you can see I've, I've coloured it mud, so it's not uh, you've got no grass. And this is a plant called Virginia creeper, which is a very nice plant in real life, which is a good spreading plant. So I've I've layered the floor basically with that, so it looks like that's just growing all along the floor in places. I didn't want it completely smothering the floor. Um, very simple, very basic, keeping the the palette quite simple just a few different plants but i think once once when you zoom out and and see the whole effect i think it works um i mean let me know what you think uh, i think i'm happy i mean well, i am happy <laughs> i'll be honest i am very happy with how this looks um as a finished product i think i think it's great i think i really do think this is one of my favorite things i've created i just think i'm, I'm amazed how well it turned out particularly as the dome was my first attempt at a dome. I thought I, the shape, the shape just worked perfectly first time, um, and I was even happy with the design, with all the like the brick color work and everything that I did, um, which is amazing because for, it's not something I tried to do before, and I just didn't expect to get it right first time. Um, and and just sort of everything else came together, you know, all the insides and certainly all of this on the outside. Again, I just went around, I just did it, and then I zoomed out and looked at it, and I thought, wow, that looks really good. These these cypress trees are just perfect to go around the outside of this dome. They just um, they just set it off in in just the right way with the pathway. Obviously, the pathway works. It just creates that shape. So if you look at it from above, um, I obviously I've purposely shaped the pathway in, in such a way that it just dips in slightly here and again that just accentuates the shape um, of of the domes on the floor if you see what i mean it sort of creates its own dome shape down on the uh, the, the floor there um so there we go that is our chimpanzee dome habitat and i absolutely love it so please let me know what you think uh, hopefully let's have a look yeah so the lights the, the light signs what am i talking about the sight lines that's better are pretty good I think from all over the zoo look at that right over here by the penguins uh, oh, no no sea lions sorry in here look you could be sitting here looking at the sea lions you look to your right and boom look at that big old dome in the distance there I love it and if you're sitting in the right place you've got this beautiful tower here as well you've got this temple tower and then you've got that dome over there you would just be sitting here watching the sea lions thinking I want to go over there I want to go there I want to see what's growing up this this tower here and I want to see what's in living in this big dome over here I love it. Sight lines is very important when you're, you're playing this sort of game. Um, well, if that's your thing anyway, it's, and, and, it, and it is my thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, as you walk towards these domes, they sort of loom over you, don't they? And then you'd get to here. Let's have a look. Let's, let's wander inside and you'd say hi to the moose. Hello, moose. How are you doing? Sorry, moose. I've got no time for you. I want to go in here. What's in here? There's nothing outside. I purposely did that. There's nothing outside to tell you what's inside. I didn't want signs saying chimpanzee house or anything like that. You have to actually come inside. And you'd get in here and you'd see chimpanzees. Look at that. You'd walk in and go, wow, there's chimpanzees everywhere. And you'd look up and you'd see trees. You'd see chimps. You'd see platforms. I mean, look at that. You'd, you'd be in chimp heaven, wouldn't you? Brilliant. And especially if you're lucky enough to come in at feeding time. And suddenly all the chimps are coming over to have some food out of their forage trays. Yeah. I think, uh, I think you'd be impressed. So you could stand here, have a read, and then watch them all have their lunch. Did you see that one? He was moonwalking. That was impressive, wasn't it? <laughs> Look, he was doing it as well. <laughs> moonwalking chimps. Brilliant. What more could you ask for? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. 
Right, well, I'm going to leave you with this lovely image all the chimps have in their breakfast. Wonderful. Right, so there we go. That is our chimp habitat. I do hope you like it. If you do, please do hit the like button. That really helps me out with the uh, the channel getting out to more people. And hopefully I'll see you again very soon, either in this zoo or one of my others, or even one of my other game series that I do here on the channel. So thanks for joining me and spending a bit of your spare time with me. I do hope you stay well until I see you again. Bye for now.